Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue. On this video, it's wild boar. That's right, wild boar. Really excited about this. It's gonna be good. Let's get going. All right, and here's the meat I'll be cooking tonight. Now these are two beautiful bone-in rib roasts from a wild boar and Tim Mitchell, my buddy over at Broadleaf Game Meats, gave these to me to kind of help him spread the word that Broadleaf is now actually selling this to the consumer market. And before they were just strictly dealing with restaurants with the wild boar, he wanted me to let you guys know basically what they're doing is buying this directly from the trappers in Texas. Veterinarians are examining the animals, making sure they're healthy then they're processed and in case some of you don't realize this wild boar have actually become quite a nuisance in the united states a lot of the states here including california but especially in texas they're an invasive species and they're causing a lot of damage so instead of just eradicating them and letting the meat go to waste they're actually harvesting a wild boar so i think it's really cool anyway so again two gorgeous bone-in rib roast. What I'm going to do first is take some stone ground mustard and I am going to rub this liberally on both sides of both roasts. Make sure I cover all the meat. I did mention it before, this, this one here is about a pound and a quarter and this one here is almost two pounds actually. Gorgeous color on these things. And they've already been French. They came this way. Now, in regards to the dry seasoning, I'm going really simple. I will be making a bourbon apple glaze that I'll be finishing these roasts with. But as far as just the initial you know, seasoning, I'm using sea salt. I want a nice crust. ground black pepper. And some granulated garlic. And again, granulated, not garlic salt. All right, I'm going to be cooking these on the big green egg tonight, so it's out there waiting for us. Let's not let it wait any longer. See you out there. All right, guys, big green egg's preheated right now. It's running at about 450, so it's pretty darn hot. Let's give it a little burp. Okay, we're gonna get these pork roasts on here. I'm going to shut the lid. Now, what I'm going to do is cook these things for about 10 minutes or so at that high temperature, at that 450. Then I'm going to dramatically lower the temperature to about 325. I'm expecting this cook to take anywhere from one and a half to two hours. And I'm looking for an internal temp of about 155 or so. These are wild pigs. I want to make sure they're thoroughly cooked. So I'm going to babysit the big green egg. And again, turn the temperature down when I need to. After that, I'm going in the kitchen and make that glaze. So I'll see you in there. All right, now for the glaze. Very, very basic hot saucepan. I'm adding one and a half cups of apple juice, one whole cup of bourbon, one half cup apple cider vinegar, and this is one quarter cup excuse me, that's one half cup of honey. About one half cup packed brown sugar. Now to this mix, anybody that watches my channel has seen this before, but I just love the stuff. Good old pickling spice. Again, it's mustard seed, coriander seed, whole black peppers, corns, 
red pepper, allspice, clove, bay leaf, and I've added a few extra shakes of crushed red pepper. That's going into the mix, and that's, I don't know, probably a tablespoon and a half or so. So what I'm going to do is bring this liquid up to a boil, and I'm going to reduce it by at least half, but what I'm really looking for is, you know, that nice glaze consistency. And all these wonderful herbs and spices I just put in here are going to steep like tea and just impart a very, very, very nice complex flavor. So, see you in a bit. All right, guys, we are an hour and 15 minutes into this, and I took the temperature just a few minutes ago, and we're really getting close to being done here. That's outdoor cooking. The good thing is with this type of uh, meat, I can foil it and I can hold it for, I mean, an hour without any worries at all. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this glaze on here. And I am going to, this glaze smells fantastic by the way. Make sure I get the bottom here. These look so darn cool with the, you know, those Frenched bones. Gosh, smells really, really good. All right, so what I'm going to do is give this, make sure it's thoroughly coated with this glaze here. Close the lid and no more than 15 minutes, I'll be done. At that point, what I'm going to do is wrap the meat, take it in the house, let it rest. I got something else going on on this big green egg that I'll be showing you here real soon. So I'll see you in a bit. All right, guys, the pork is in the house resting and I wanna show you what I've done. I have one of those screens here that's you know designed for grilling vegetables and small items that will fall through the grates. I have some peeled and sliced parsnip, some peeled carrots, some kind of thin carrots, and I have some Granny Smith apples that I've sliced and hit with cinnamon and sugar. And I'm going to run my pit at about 350 or so, and I'm guessing 20, maybe 30 minutes, or so, these will be done. By that time, pork will be ready to slice and we will be in the kitchen eating. So, see you in there. All right, guys, and here it is. Looks good, and it's definitely passing the smell test. One more, the most important test to pass, obviously, is the taste test. So, one of my favorite parts. I don't know. I love the taste, but the cooking to me is just the fun part. Anyway. Let's give this a try. Just so you know, again, I got the apples down here. Got some wild rice, which I think just complements this perfectly. Wild boar, wild rice. Let's give this a shot here. Let me try not to make a mess. Wow, again, very, very tender. Mmm. Wow, you know, definitely, you know, obviously it tastes like pork, it's pork, but it does have a little bit of a different flavor. It's got a little bit more of an earthy flavor. I guess you can kind of, kind of a nutty flavor. And Tim also hooked me up with some wild boar St. Louis trimmed spare ribs, which were the coolest things. I cooked some and took them to a party, to a, like a football game party, and brought those as appetizers because they were little, I mean, little, little, but they taste really, really good. And I definitely wanna make a video on cooking those. Um, we were actually joking around with the, one, the wife of our buddy who had the party because she has a chihuahua. <laughs> and we were saying, hey. Anyway, enough of that. Thank you guys for stopping by. Go check out Broadleaf Game Meats. I'll put a link down below. You will not regret it. 
awesome site, awesome company. Cheers, guys.